one of the reasons I like this project is on the, underneath of the water is the foundation of the art. His desire for, for art, so the sense of music and poetry and painting and sculpture is a foundation that's merging you know, with, with the idea of domestic life. So that's a kind of, that's a kind of mini utopia. So there's two things. There's the idea that drives the design, which was that musical diagram and the notion of music and the sheet of water and the light. But the most important thing is the body moving through space and the actual feeling that you get. For me, you know, architecture really has to be experienced. You have to walk through it. You have to sense the sound. Here we have an acoustic. We have a reverberation time in this gallery of about 1.6 seconds, which is like an old church. And that, that's because of the stone floor, a hone stone floor, and the hard surfaces and the organization of the proportions. The first moment of entry really is ascending this half stair. And here you're in the center of the composition. You're in the entrance pavilion, the middle of the three, but your view is to the outside. So, so the excitement really is you're inside, but the, the focus is the outside. And that outside unifies these three pieces in the feeling of the water, the sheet of water going through. The body moving through space is at five feet, six inches. That's where you experience everything. It's very important that this ramp bring you down gently and you see the horizon of the water start to lift and you can sense the natural light coming through every cut from the pavilions above. There are secondary cuts in the, in, the, in the spaces of the buildings and that light traveling through coming to the main gallery below. And you can see this sort of active light from the sun and the wind blowing in the water above. So here we are without any electric lights on. It's perfect. This is the perfect light. We should just cut their power off, you know? Then they won't misuse it. Now this is the, this is the way this place should be, you know? You know, it's all in natural light. Every single square inch of this project has been designed so that you don't have to turn the lights on during the day. This sense of this wall, this puncture, and that angular sweep, all of that is related to, the, to the, the, the sense of that floor in that room being a sheet of light. This is that sheet of light that's in the same plane as the sheet of water that unifies all the pavilions. So we have this sense that there's a datum line, a kind of horizon right above the gallery. And then the second datum, all these pavilions are the same height, is where this musical score and these staff lines modulate the light in the space. As the time of day changes, every day changes, and every season changes. So these dancing lines activate, always activate the space. Like the tradition of, of Korean gardening, the idea of a pond of water is not contained. It connects out into the neighborhood, into the landscape, into the mountain beyond. So this water slot, it's, it's intentional that that feeling of connection going out to the community and to the landscape and to this adjacent landscape. To me, the detail is very important. You know, just the moment where the steel comes down and meets a bracket on the floor, where wood joints to granite. The experience of architecture is a tactile thing. It comes down to the space, the light, the materiality, and where you touch it, where you feel it. This is a, a rarity today. That's really exciting to me, that, that, that architecture can change the way you feel, like music. You know, when you're playing a piece of music, if you're sad, or it can make you, it can bring you into another world. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of idea of, of architecture being something that changes you, and that's why I say it's like a miniature utopia. Mm -hmm. The place becomes a place by, by a world by itself.